welcome, welcome, welcome to Gab and Jam, episode 162. This one, I'm sure some of you guys are going to be really upset with us because since you were a kid, you have been under the impression that if you get that fender strap, you are going to imbue all of that guitar wizardry that Jimi Hendrix has. However, the title for this episode is The Magic Is Not In The Gear. It is not. That's true. Because, um, you know, it, it... The thing is, you have to realize with gear, gear is always going to be tools. Mm -hmm. That's it. You know, and so I, I will say that if you have good gear, that the better the gear, the better you may sound on the gear. Okay. As sounding like you. Okay. You, you know oh, what like I mean? That. Okay. So, so, so meaning that I, I here's a Fender Jazz bass, right? Mm -hmm. So if I go, I mean, I don't sound like Larry Graham playing it. I that that's a Larry Graham bass line. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't make me sound like Larry Graham. Mm -hmm. This still sounds like me. You know, so what comes out of this mm -hmm. is me playing. But the gear is good because, you know, um, it's got a nice clear sound to it. It's got all the rest mm -hmm. of those type of things. But you also have to do stuff. Yes. You know, so meaning <laughs> that your technique still makes a difference. So, right. you know, if I hand this bass to someone who, you know, has a familiarity with playing the bass. Me. You know, <laughs> You gonna sound like somebody that don't know how to play bass, yes. and I don't care what kind of bass I, I hand over to right, you. You know, yes. but I, I think gear can be used to inspire you. Yeah. I mean, so let's let's just go to Sugar Fit, right? Okay. So I mean, a lot of the bass lines that are on Sugar Fit, uh, I feel like were inspired, you know, from that for dear bass, right? That mm. you know, so so it's mm. sort of like like stay with me was like one of the first bass lines that I did on that bass when I when I brought it home. And I think I even uploaded a video or something like oh, that. Right. And it was mm -hmm. like, you know, it, and I'm just playing this bass line. And that bass line goes on to be Stay With Me, right? right. And then there's, uh, you know, the bass lines like uh, Honey, uh, you know, again, uh, I, I, that's 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 just that for deer just talking to me, right? Okay. I mean, you know, there's, there's bass lines like, um, uh, what's that? Uh, I Get Faded, mm -hmm. you know, again, that is that for deer bass. I was going to say, that's the theme, the theme for the episode. Right, so you right. can hear it there. Uh, yeah. Something's wrong. The yes. for deer. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, I, so, so all of these are kind of like bass lines that, you know, I, I would say that the gear pulled from me. But I don't sound like Victor Wooten mm -hmm. when I'm playing. Mm -hmm. I mean, all of these still just sound like me. Mm -hmm. So it's not kind of going into another place. Or even like um, a song like uh, Anything. Mm -hmm. uh, that was written, I, I think, primarily on the Sandberg. So there's like mm -hmm. these bass chords that I'm doing, and then there's the bass line uh, that that underlines it, and all that comes from the Sandberg oh. bass. So, so again, I mean, it, it's that bass yeah. that kind of you know pulls pull something, yeah, yeah. pull something out of me, you know. Or like you know, I had a, a white Fender jazz bass, mm -hmm. and so like, tell me what you want mm -hmm. uh, from higher up, deeper in. Yeah. That that came from that bass. Yeah. You know, and a lot of times, I know for me, when the bass is kind of pulling stuff out of me, a lot of times you'll hear two bass lines on the on the song. Mm -hmm. So so there'll be like you know a main bass riff, and then there'll be like bass chords. Okay. Because usually I can't put the bass down long enough to grab the guitar <laughs> to start cording, okay. so I just start cording on the bass, okay. and so that so it kind of gives that I aspect like to that. it. So there's that inspirational aspect. Yeah, then that, that, and 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 that can't be denied that if you have new equipment. Right. And I say the same for plugins. I'm I'm now. Uh, I'm sold on video uh, plugins for Final Cut Pro, and they do kind of make me feel like I want to do a different type of video right. because of the plugin. However, right. Right. the plugin itself is not going to do the video. Right? No, so no. the equipment is not going to actually. Do it's that. not going to make the. It's not going to make the thing. And, and I think the, the the thing about gear is that you you have to find gear that works best for you. So I what mean, do you mean, so this base. I mean, you know, this base. Uh, this uh, 1978 Fender Jazz bass. So, um, I, you know, I went through a period of time where, you know, I, I sold, I had a, a four-string Music Man. Mm -hmm. I, I traded that. I got a five-string 
music man that was just god awful for me to play. <laughs> I, I, it just never fit me, you know, and so I, I just never felt comfortable playing that bass. Mm -hmm. And so I think I went a couple of years where I, I just felt like I wasn't even playing the bass. Mm -hmm. And and so um, we went to this music store and they had this bass there and the bass was, it had like horrible strings on it. Uh, you know, the neck was needed adjusting and I picked the bass up and it just felt great. Wow. It's like, it's like even with all these things wrong with it, right. and I knew all these things were right. wrong with it when I picked it up. But I was like, man, I, I can't put this thing down. This thing is <laughs> awesome. You know, so I think I, you know, I, I told him, hey, I'll trade you my five string music man for mm -hmm. it. And they say, you got to give us another $300. I didn't argue with him. <laughs> I didn't give him another $300. And this was like, I don't know, back in the 80s or something, like 89 or yeah. something like that when I got this bass. But for the longest, this was it. Yeah. You know, this was the only bass that was in the arsenal. Yeah. You know, up until we did the Tony Webb record. Yeah. And I'm saying that to this day, this bass still pulls things out of me. Yeah. You know, and it still feels like home. So it's sort of like of all the other gear that I have. Right. If I'm just reduced to one bass, this would be it. Oh, wow. This is the bass that I would, you know, and this is, I got the Fudira, you know, we got the Samba, yep. I got a PB Cyrus. Yeah, we got plenty of videos, so I'll put the playlist right. um, in the description. Yeah. And, but but this is this is the bass. This is the gear that, you know, for me, this is home. It's the same thing with guitars, you know. I they got, like, the Telecaster, but I have this Music Man silhouette from circa 1986 or 87, whenever we got it. Um, if I had one guitar, oh wow, that would be the it. One. That okay. would be the one guitar. But that, that's the for the longest. This bass, that guitar, mm -hmm. was kind of it, you know. Mm -hmm. And then it was like an acoustic guitar, and that, mm -hmm. that was that was kind of what we had as right. far as gear goes. Yeah. So I, I guess I'm saying that to say that you know, um, kind of moving on to your next point is that one of the things that always kind of get you going to get new gear is mm. that the grass is always green. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that you always think, oh yeah, you know, it's promising. And that's kind of what I thought when I got that five string music man. Uh -huh. You know, let me get the five string because, you know, everybody was playing five strings at the time. Mm -hmm. And I thought the grass would be greener, you mm -hmm. know, and it wasn't, mm -hmm. you know. And so, so I, I just say that to say that when, when, it, when it comes to buying gear or getting gear, Make sure that you're getting gear that fits you. Okay, I like that. You know, that that is that that speaks to you, speaks to who you are, that to me pulls creativity out of you. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, I mean it seems like it okay. should do that. It's like uh, when we when I got the telecaster, when we got the telecaster we mm -hmm. at um Gear yes, we were Gear Fest, yes. Sweetwater, right? And, you know, we got to the hotel room and, and the rip for start over. over. That's right. Came out that's of that. right. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah. that, again, that's that, that's that feeling that, oh, wow, you know, I'm feeling very comfortable, feeling very creative mm -hmm. with this particular instrument in my hand. Not that I'm feeling like whoever is the great Telecaster player in the world, right? But it's what is it doing for you? What yeah. is it doing? Well, to and then I know we've you? said this before, but maybe it bears repeating here is that that's one reason why you need to play things before you yeah. purchase them, yeah, because you've tried to do the mail order thing and. That doesn't always It doesn't you know, always, always work success. out. Yeah, because I think I got like a line six bass or something like that, and um, it just it just never worked for me. Mm -hmm. You know, it just didn't. You know, for whatever reason, it just never felt great. And that's one reason to actually go to places like. Uh, you know the music, um, the expos. You know, so you can yeah. actually play yeah. stuff that maybe you can't get at your local music shop. Yeah, you know, I mean, this is the thing that was always difficult for me with a place like Guitar Center is that you know I hate to you know bash Guitar <laughs> to, Center to kick them while they're down. <laughs> but you know, um, I, I just after a while you start to you know not feel like you're getting the best mm -hmm. of what's out there. And, yeah, when they don't have the stuff, yeah. They don't yeah. actually have a wide variety. And for right. all kinds of reasons. I mean, they have their reasons, but... Right. But so that's why we ended up going to the Chicago Music Exchange. Right. Yeah. That's why we started going to the Music Expo so that you could play a wider variety yeah. of types of instruments. Yeah, so. you know, even though I got to give my shout out to Sean, because I remember I did, like, one Sean of the... May. Yeah, yeah, Sean May. You know, he makes basses. I mean, he's, he's awesome. And I remember one time I went into Guitar Center... 
and I just happened to start playing some of the bases. I was like, who was setting these bases right. up? Because they all sounded great. And um, that's how I got him to start setting up my bases. Yeah. He just did an awesome so, job. So the points I, we, we wanted to make was, you've already made it, the grass is greener, looking at somebody else, you know, with this wonderful piece of equipment or in a catalog. Yeah. Um, the second thing is, but the gear itself won't make you great. Yeah. It's not going to make you sound like Marcus Miller <laughs> yeah. or Victor Marcus Miller bass, I don't care which one it is, the, the Fender one or the, the Sire basses. They're not going to make you sound like Marcus Miller. Right. I, I, but that's not the diss the instruments. Right. I'd say the no. instrument's not a great instrument. No. You know what I mean? From and what so, I've heard, they're all great instruments. And so the things that will make you great, you've already said, uh, pick the instrument that is seems suited to you once you once you try it. Yeah. Um, try new techniques. Yeah. Uh, another thing you do, of course, is constant practice, practice and then right. learning as much as you can about that instrument. Those are the things that are going to work for yeah, you. And, and that's the thing, too. Uh, with respect to techniques, some techniques might not be for you either. Yeah. You know, uh, Again, uh, you, you really have to try to find your center as an artist, as a musician, as, you know, whatever it might be. Because yeah. that, that was a thing from Marcus Miller. You know, he said that, you know... Kind of finding your sound and, and 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 sometimes finding your lane, you know, it's not a bad thing. It's like Jocko, like he said, you know, Jocko played the Fender Jazz bass, mm -hmm. right? But you know, he took all the frets out, mm -hmm. so it was fretless. <laughs> and then this front pickup right here, he turned the volume all the way down, and he only used mm. this back pickup, you know, and that, that that's that's what he used for his sound. Mm. But that became the Jocko sound, yeah. You know, that fretless bass. With him playing back there, and just like that, that limitation mm -hmm. did it. And, and mm -hmm. I'm saying sometimes it, you didn't hear him thumping and plucking. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, when Marcus Miller said he played for, for Jocko, and he was like, What am I going to play? I'm not going to play Jocko for Jocko. Right. So, you know, he was doing all this stuff. You know, and Jocko said, I can do that. Yeah. But I choose not to. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, and, and sometimes right. that's the, the way it has to be yeah. with certain techniques and things that are out there that sometimes you have to say, you know, maybe I could do that, right? But I'm not gonna do that. I'm I'm gonna perfect what I love. Mm -hmm. You know, I like and that. concentrate on what I love I like and perfecting that. that, and that will be your voice, right? Yes. You know, and that yes. sometimes that that's the thing. Yes. You know, we all have limits. We have, you know, or you want to say evolutionary limits or mm -hmm. God given limits. Mm -hmm. You know, to, to who we are. Mm -hmm. You know, but those limits aren't necessarily bad things. Right. right. You know, and right. you know, it, it's yeah. not. It's it's just like those limits are good things mm -hmm. because those things as you start to hone in on what's special about you, that's where you found your voice. And that's where you find your way to connect with, you know, whatever your tribe is. So. Okay, um, so as you become better, that Fender Strat that's just like Jimi Hendrix will start sounding better. That's what it will, mean, right? and, and you'll find a way to make that Fender Strat sound like you. Yes. It's just like the White Stripes, you know. Uh, you know, you think about their whole sound, yeah. and you think about, you know, the White Stripes are not the White Stripes. You know, without either with Meg White right. or Jack White. Yes. And I know Jack White's the one supposed to be the virtue also, but it's her on the drum. Yeah. That's that's also a huge part of that sound. sound yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You don't have those records without her on the drums. I mean, you know, whatever you might think of her as a drummer, I mean, hey, that's the she's sound. great yes. for that. Yes. She's great for what she's doing. And yes. at the end of the day, that's the same thing for, you know, Neil Peart. You know, yeah. I mean, he's great for what Rush is doing, but, right. you know, it, it, it wouldn't necessarily work for what the White Stripes do. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, and she's great for what the White Stripes do. Yeah. And that's kind of what you have to do. You have to be great for what you do. Yeah. You know, I so. Like that. All right. I like that. All right. So, as always. Uh, yeah, we are still doing Sugar Fit. Sugar Fit. You know, Ooh. available everywhere. So, you know, you all can get it. All streaming services. All streaming services. Spotify. Bandcamp, uh, you know, Apple Music, Amazon. If you, you want it. the vinyl, go to Patreon. We're yep. um, doing a, a drive for the vinyl. So yep, if you are. want to participate in that, yep. make sure you go to the link below. Yeah. If you dig the vibe and you want to be a part of this tribe, make sure you subscribe. We're wishing you love, peace, and chicken grease. Yeah.